and any um, entrepreneurs watching this, anybody that's wanting to, to get into that kind of entrepreneurial um, lifestyle, you know, will already know or needs to realise how tough it is. <laughs> I think we'll all agree that Hayley is um, more balanced than I am, and she's definitely got the people bought into her probably you know, more than probably what I get from me. I mean, I get the sales people bought in, but I think she's got a really balanced um, view. Her skills and personality are perfect for this type of environment. I would uh, I'd take the Pepsi challenge against anyone, man, woman or beast, who think they could take her to the cleaners, because I'd I really like to see that happen. Like she, she's always really positive. She's really good at driving everyone on. Uh, obviously, she really always puts a shift in herself. She's probably one of the most inspiring people I work with. I don't think I've ever not seen her with a big smile on her face, even if you like telling her like something that's probably not very smiley. <laughs> she's still smiling and she's still really positive about everything. So as Chief Operating Officer, um, you are the person that's making sure that you're working with your marketing team to know that they um, understand enough about the brand and the product offering to be able to really take that product to market and know that you're attracting all of the right customers um, to be able to come on board. It's then making sure that you're working with the sales team, that if you're investing you know, thousands and thousands of pounds that we have to invest in in terms of, um, of generating those customers, making sure that you've got a sales team of people that are really engaged in finding the right customer. Um, and that's really important um, because I'm also accountable, of course, for the service that we deliver. So all of the service teams sit within um, within my team um, to, to kind of bring the brand to life every day. Um, and then, of course, you've got all of this stuff that then happens behind the scenes that sits within your team um, as, as kind of the, the operations officer. Um, and that's everything people related. So um, work really closely with our HR team and um, we've got a fantastic team of people that you know are really trying to, to take our culture and, and create that fantastic startup vibe but that kind of um, professionalism and protection I guess that people feel they get from more of a corporate um, environment um, never taking away that kind of work hard play hard culture um, that we have that's a challenge in itself when you're growing at the rate that we are um, and then we also have all of the CRM so the team you know the, the, the team that I have working for me on our CRM and the tech Technology that we're using there. Um, Charlie and his team do a brilliant job to keep themselves ahead of the game of the technology and it's trying to kind of steer that team in, in the right direction so that they have the freedom that they need to be able to, to really um, go out and, and find out you know what what technology is doing and, and work out how do we bring that back to our um, teams to just constantly improve the, the I guess the way that our guys are able to interact with their customers. Pretty simple then. Easy. <laughs> Anyone could do it. <laughs> What's your thoughts on working that closely with an entrepreneur? Because obviously your class is an intro entrepreneur. Um, what's what's that relationship like? How did it start? How did you build it up? And you know, kind of where is it now? Um, I think Jason and I are a really good complement to each other. We're kind of each other's yin to, to the yang. Um, one of the things I guess that I'll always be really thankful for with Jason is the confidence that he builds in you. Um, I'd have loved to have rewound back um, when I first started to work for Jason um, and interviewed him six months in to see what he said because I think he said I was really shit. <laughs> so, um, because actually, you know, I, I, all of my experience before had been in a big corporate business where um, everything is pretty much laid out for you. So actually, all you need to worry about is how you get the people on board, and, and that's something that I really enjoy. You know, I'm, I'm heavily motivated by taking people on a, a journey and helping people kind of be the best that they can be so when you come into a business that you don't have any of that and suddenly you realize that you are the resource and pretty much the only resource that's going to get you through each day and I think Jason and I have um, formed quite a close bond from the early days of getting each other through those hard days so it's not easy um, facing the challenges that, that, that you face every day so you've got to have a really good relationship with the people around you you know if I come into work one day um, and you know things are falling around it, around me I've got to know that I've got that support of my leader to be able to go and talk through that and we fix it together you know I'll be that positive ray of light and on his shoulder to remind him of the great things that we're doing because sometimes you, you do get lost in um you know in in the, the kind of pressure and and noise of everything around you um 
you recently won a an award. Yeah, so it's the first woman in business um, award, and it was very much around um, kind of leading the way, I guess, for for women out there. Um, I have to say that I've I was very very fortunate um, in the start of my career. I had a fantastic um, female leader. Um, so Andrea, if you're watching this, massive thanks to you because I think it's you that really set me on the right path in terms of knowing that it didn't matter whether I was boy or girl. It was absolutely about how capable I was, how hard I worked, um, how resilient I was. And I think that kind of early grounding that I had gave me that, that confidence and never ever doubted that I'd be able to do something or wouldn't be able to do it just because I was a woman. Um, I think um, being a parent kind of gives you a, a real sense of, of drive as well and sense of motivation. Um, and the award was around, um, you know, how I am making sure that I can get that balance between being a great mum because that's the biggest motivation that you can have. But I want her to be able to see me um, inspiring others. I want her to be able to look at that and realize that she can be a mum she can be a career woman she can do anything she might choose to be a stay-at-home mum you know whatever she chooses to do is absolutely up to her but there's nothing more um kind of sad i guess when you see these people that have got this fantastic talent before they become a parent and suddenly they lose a bit of their identity once they um you know once they have that child and you know i, I don't think that should happen i think it should absolutely be about how capable you are as an individual. I think um, the, the biggest mistake that people make is using the word work-life balance in the sense that people feel as though they almost have to put things in a box that you're um, you know, a parent there and you're at work there. Actually, the more that you can enable those two things to work together, the easier it is to have that balance. Um, one of the things that really attracted me to the role um, when I joined Jason was the flexibility that he gave me to be able to do both. Um, you know, it was really important to me that I was able to take my daughter to school every now and then that once a week and that's all I needed was just once a week I could be a mum that turns up at the school gate picks up your daughter walk home with her you know ha have that experience of, of knowing that you've got that time together and you know from the, the, the get-go that that was something that Jason always made clear to me um, that my time was my own and so you know I've never ever missed a school assembly I've not missed any parents evenings I'll go and help out on days where I can so that she feels as though I I'm there for her um, but I include her here as well you know she comes into the office she knows half the people as well as I do she knows all the naughty ones <laughs> as well as the you know the great performers and I think because she feels part of it it makes me feel more comfortable around you know the days where I do have to go away for a couple of days because she kind of knows where I am and and gets it you know when she grows up she absolutely looks at the fact that of course she's going to lead people of course she's going to be the one you know that's there motivating people because she's almost put me in a little bit of this hero state of, of what she can do. Um, what do you feel are the wins and, and sometimes the losses of being in this environment? When you work in an entrepreneurial-led business, um, you know, you have got freedom to just try stuff. You've got freedom to be able to go and spot something's not working and the next day you're able to fix it. Um, you know, if you're someone that likes working at pace, then you've got the, the perfect environment to be able to really drive through um, the right changes and just take responsibility for things that, um, you know, you know that you can make better and, and improve. Um, you also can attract like-minded people so my points earlier about the people that you surround yourself with when I'm building my team I have the freedom to be able to find people that are an amazing cultural fit it's not about what's on their CV it's not about the qualifications that they've got it's about is this person going to absolutely be by my, by my side when the shit's hitting the fan you know is this person going to be someone that is absolutely resilient enough to be able to help get us to that next level um, you know and can bring something to the table to help us keep getting better and, and better and it's fun you know you have got the freedom to be able to have you know a, a huge amount of fun whilst you're doing it so I've been able to take all of the bits that I loved about Aviva all of the best bits of working in that sort of environment I can bring that here and leave all of the crappy bits that you don't want to do behind because it's in our gift when we started the business we just did things that made sense so you know didn't have a degree but we didn't really need one because we started a company and that wasn't on the company formation documents so that happy day so we could do that no problem um, and then uh, and then the right person for the job for the for the customer service role seems to be Haley, who's still here now. I mean, she's phenomenal, and she's developed massively. And now she's running the whole operations for Epos now. I think if you give people total flexibility and you allow them to be mums, you allow them to be fathers, and you allow them to pick the children up, uh, you can get 
you can get massive loyalty from, from them as well. So you can get massive loyalty from them guys because you're giving them flexibility. Most other big companies are rigid and they don't give that flexibility. So if you do that, you get absolute loyalty and you get complete flexibility. Everyone's on even playing field, everyone's got a chance. You know, let's run with it. Simple as.